Next, uh, Brazil's president, Jair Bolsonaro, should face criminal charges for his handling of the COVID-19 pandemic. That's the conclusion of a leaked report being published in full today. It paints a damning picture of Bolsonaro's government, one of neglect and of incompetence. Over 600,000 people in Brazil have died of COVID-19, making it the highest, uh, second highest rather, death toll in the world. James Vecina tells us more. We're not going to play that report for you now. My apologies. Instead, we are going to uh, go live to King's College London and speak to Professor Anthony Pereira, who's talking to us now. Uh, thanks for your time today, Prof Professor Pereira. Um, first of all, this report, it makes for extremely damning reading, doesn't it? Um, how much individual responsibility do you think this report puts on the president himself, Jair Bolsonaro? Uh, well, it's pl pretty clear that it holds President Bolsonaro accountable and about, uh, I think, about 70 other people. Um, the real importance of the report, though, is not, I don't think, because it will necessarily lead to prosecutions. That's unlikely, at least in the short term, because the prosecutorial, the federal prosecutorial service is under the command of a, an appointee of President Bolsonaro. But I think it's really trying to set the historical record straight and setting the political record straight for for an accounting. Um, you know, the, 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 uh, uh, the supporters of the president will claim, well, these, these senators are electorally motivated, they're opponents of the president, they disagree amongst themselves. And all of that is true. But I think the evidence that this committee uncovered of um, real, not just negligence, um, but dissemination of, of news that was very, very, uh, that was false and very damaging to public health in Brazil and promoting a chloroquine um, in a way that just led Brazil down a blind alley. I think a lot of people, this will cement the, the conclusion that many people have already made in Brazil, that this government has been done an egregiously bad job in dealing with the pandemic. Well, let's talk about um, those reports of fake news that you mentioned there. Um, the government spreading false information that then went on to damage the public health of people in Brazil. Why did the government do that? Why wasn't it in Bolsonaro's government interest to protect Brazilian people? Well, the evidence we have is that Bolsonaro started talking about chloroquine two days after Donald Trump did in March of 2020. And then touted it as some sort of miracle cure. And he was able to stifle the protests of his own ministers who disagreed with him. So two of his health ministers, one resigned and one was fired, and partly over this issue of promoting chloroquine, not just saying that it was efficacious, but having the military spend money pr uh, producing it and acquiring it. Um, so I think it's because uh, the president's approach was always extremely ideological. He did not approach this pandemic as a, a scientific conundrum, something that could be solved through uh, research and, and following uh, guidelines from the WHO and other entities, his own public health uh, infrastructure, which is very good. Brazilian public health infrastructure is, is justifiably, the people in it are proud of what they've done in the past with polio and with uh, smallpox, HIV, AIDS. But unfortunately, he was able to override a lot of those voices of reason. And the result is what you mentioned, 600,000 deaths, second highest national death toll in the world. And is it your view then that many of those 600,000 deaths were preventable? As you said, Brazil has a pretty good public health system. And were it not for the actions of this government, many of those people would have lived. I think so. I think a lot of people in Brazil will come to that conclusion. Uh, the lockdowns in Brazil began quite early. They began um, around the same time that they did in the UK, but with far fewer cases. So had the federal government, instead of trying to block those lockdowns, instead of the, having a president fighting the mayors and fighting the governors who were trying to impose what the consensus view was the best strategy at that time to deal with the coronavirus, he fought against them. And he told people uh, not to adhere to them. Um, so this was a very, this was a president who really went against uh, the consensus within his own public health community. Um, there was, there's been some focus in the report, as I understand it, of the way that indigenous communities in Brazil were treated by this government. Speak to us a bit about the findings in that regard. 
Right. So this is one of the disagreements, I think, that existed amongst the senators in the, in, who were in opposition to the Bolsonaro government. They dropped the charge in the end of genocide against the indigenous. Um, but they do have evidence in the report. And I, you know, I've only read summaries of it so far. It's over a thousand pages. But there is material in there, I think, of inaction and um, a failure to, um, you know, to provide indigenous communities, many of which are quite remote from, um, from major urban centers. Uh, to, to shield them from from the effects of the coronavirus. So that's one of many charges that are in there. Uh, another one is the disaster that happened in Manaus, when uh, hospitals in Manaus didn't even have oxygen uh, to try to keep people alive in the, in the sort of worst part of the pandemic there. Um, but the, the there is a chapter on the indigenous in, in the report, and that will be uh, picked over, I think, by the by the uh, press in the next few days. And you mentioned a little earlier that despite the evidence here, you think it is unlikely the president will actually be prosecuted here. But I wonder if that isn't the case in the courts. May Jair Bolsonaro suffer in the court of public opinion? Because there are, after all, elections coming up in Brazil next year. What do you think? Yes, I think that is very much the intended effect of, 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 the, of the CPI, of the uh, Parliamentary Committee. After, after March, um, the presidential election campaign will be heating up. We already have evidence that um, a, a lot of people have decided not to vote for the president. Uh, the recent survey I saw said 59 percent of the people do not intend to vote for Bolsonaro. So he's really suffered a dent in his popularity. And opposition politicians will take this report and they will use pieces of it and they will keep it in front of the public as the campaign heats up over those months. It officially begins in August, but it unofficially begins many months before that. So this is this is looking um, like a cementing the reputation that the president already has as someone who has performed uniquely badly in this vital area. And part of it is just taking it seriously, seeing the presidency as having, as a president, having a duty of care to protect the health of the public. And a lot of the evidence in the, in the report is that um, this duty of care was missing, uh, not just by the president, but other people who were working for him. Professor Pereira uh, from the Brazil Institute at King's College London, thanks for your analysis and thank you for your time today. Thank you.